Hey there, second graders. Math. Math for the second graders. Listen, you guys are in unit number 10, and that's all about data. Yeah, we introduced you to that unit, and we went over the key vocabulary that you needed. Uh, and as I've been looking through this unit, the first thing you all talk about are the different different types of ways you can display data. You know, with picture graphs, tallies, and then getting into it, the very first lesson 10.1 talks about collecting data. And that's the whole point. Because you want to understand something, you either conduct an experiment or you make an observation. You, you gather some data. And that data then can lead you to conclusions. It can help you understand something or predict something. So there's, there's all kinds of reasons. And, and I'll tell you, data is everywhere. If you want to have a really good job when you grow up, become a statistician, a person who just does that, collects the data, analyzes it, puts out their findings. It's a highly refined skill. But in second grade, you're just being introduced to it. Collecting data. Let's just say, for example, <clears throat> it it rained for four days here. And we don't know we don't know what the average rainfall was, but we know that it rained for four days and then on like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. What I'm beginning to build here is a data table. It's a place you put that information so that then you can go back to it and then make some sense out of it. So we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And what they're going to do on each one of these days is they're going to take two measurements. The measurement number one and number two. Now you see how just by defining that I've created a table. A place to put that information. So now, we're going to measure the accumulated rainfall twice a day, once every 12 hours. So we're going to measure it at midnight, we're going to measure it at 12 noon. We'll get two readings and the amount of rainfall, we'll know how much rainfall fell in a 24-hour period. So let's just say on Monday in the first on Monday it rained two inches, Tuesday it rained three as the storm got worse, Wednesday it went back to two, and Thursday as the storm was passing past, the rain accumulation diminished. And then this is going to reflect that second measurement that we have. Now we have data. These are the datas. Now, there's all kinds of things we can figure out now that we have this data. For example, on Monday, all together, we can add to this the total 
for that 24 hour period. And here it would be 5 inches, 7 inches, 5 inches again, and 3 inches. Now, let's just do one thing. Let's just figure out what the average rainfall over that four-day period was. And how do you figure the average? You add the totals all together and divide it by the number of different data points that you have. So there are four. So we got five, seven, five, and three. All together, it rained 20 inches in four days. And because there are four entries of data, we divide it by the four, and it tells us that the average amount of rainfall was five inches a day, 20 divided by four. Second grade, you may not be at that point where you're figuring that stuff out. <clears throat> but I just wanted to do that to let you know there's a reason why you're learning this. Now, let's just take and keep our totals. Let's get rid of everything else. So we have our total rainfall over those four days. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, we can build a graph just by using those totals. So in order to build a graph, it's going to look like that. This line on the bottom is the x. This line is the y. Now, on this side of the graph, we're going to have that inches of rain. And on this, we're going to have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. <clears throat> we know that at this point here is always zero. And then we can go up one inch. 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, 5 inches, 6 inches. And then finally, up at the top, 7 inches. Because on Tuesday, we had seven inches of rain, so you got to have at least seven inches in order to graph them. So now let's look. On Monday, and what we're going to build here is what is called a bar graph. A bar graph. In other words, I'm going to draw a bar for each point of data that we have. So on Monday, it's five inches. Here's five inches, here's Monday. So this is the bar that we would dry, uh, draw for Monday. Tuesday, we had seven inches, and that's all the way up here. So we come over on Tuesday, and we come over to seven inches. So this is seven inches, this is five inches, and now we have our bar for Tuesday. Wednesday, 
we go back to 5 inches. So we find 5 inches come across on Wednesday. And we draw the bar for Wednesday. Thursday, however, Thursday was only 3 inches. So, 3 inches be this point right here, 3 inches, you come straight across and then you make your bar over Thursday and we just built a bar graph. How easy was that? When you're building these graphs, so you've got to keep in mind Look at your data. What is it that it's telling you? It's telling you inches of rain and days of the week. You have to decide where to put them. Now, usually you can go either way and your bars would then go in another direction. If we put the days up here and the numbers here, our bars would go sideways. It looked just like this, except you'd have to tip it on its side. But it would still say the same thing. So understanding, first of all, collecting the data. Make an accurate record of how you collect your data and build a chart that you can put that data into. Make sure you label your chart so you understand what those items mean. Let's just look through this. On page 662 and 663, there's picture, picture graphs. And that takes a lot more work because you got to, you got to be a pretty good artist in some of this stuff to be able to draw it. But you can put pictures into a graph. There's some exercises there. And once you get your pictures in your graph, if you want to use that information to tally up numbers, when you tally something, you're totaling it up. What is, how many flowers were there in the garden? How many balloons were at the birthday party? When you tally something, you're getting the total. Just like we got the total, even though we measured it a couple of times, every day we had a total. As you work through Lesson 10.2 and 10.3, you're building picture graphs. And that's going to challenge your artistic ability. But you're also building some bar graphs. And on 6.72 and 6.73, you see examples of bar graphs where the bars go up and down or where the bars go side to side. Again, it just depends on what you put on the x-axis and what you put on the y-axis of the graph. So what goes on the side, what goes on the bottom? The bottom's the x-axis, the side's the y-axis. And then if you see a graph and you look at a graph, you got to be able to figure out what that graph is saying to you. Our graph, if I didn't have this number here, this chart, if I was just given this graph and it was asking me, for example, on which day of the week had the most rain? Well, you come over here and you see that, well, we had five, we had seven, five, and three. Well, Tuesday, it rained the most. And if I was to ask you the question, 
which day did it rain the least? Well, it rained the least on Thursday because it only rained three inches. But I could also ask you the question, on these four days, how much did it rain altogether? Now you've got to add. You've got to add to 5 and to 7 and to 5 and to 3. So you can answer that question just by looking at the graph, adding those numbers together, and be able to tell it rained 20 inches. Pretty cool, huh? So there's three things right through the door that just looking at the picture of the graph questions that you can be answering. And you'll get some of that as you get into units 10.4. Lesson 10.4 is all about reading graphs. Reading those bar graphs. What do they mean? The example that they give you on page 675 is uh, baseball, soccer, basketball, and football. And they're trying to decide, they've asked, what's your favorite sport? Well, I can look at that and see soccer was the favorite sport of eight kids that they asked. I can also tell you that only two kids liked football. It was liked the least. But I can also tell you that there were three that liked basketball, eight that liked soccer, five that liked basketball, two that liked football, so I can say three and eight is 11, and five is 16, and two is 18. I can tell you that they asked 18 kids. All together, they asked 18 kids what sport they liked the best, and then they got their answers. Reading the chart, you just look at it says baseball. You follow the bar over until it stops at the number. You look at what number that is. And you can see three kids liked baseball. So reading a graph is pretty simple. 10.5, you're going to be making some bar graphs just like we did on the board today. And 10.6, they're going to give you some better skills on how to build those data charts. How to build a chart, put your information in it in the best way to understand it, and that will end Unit 10. So we just went all the way through Unit 10, because it's really all about the same thing. And if you're really smart about this, Every one of these units, when we get into Unit 11, what do we got going on in Unit 11? Let's just see. Ooh, geometry. Geometry and fraction concepts. That will be really interesting. And this is stuff that the better you know it now, the easier math will be in the years to come. So we'll uh, we'll spend a little more time in geometry and fraction. But go through the whole go through the whole unit. Look at the entire unit. Don't just look at unit 10.1 and stop. Look at what it all is going to be connected by that makes sense out of the whole unit, how it all fits together. That's my lesson for today for you second graders. I hope you kids are being safe, taking care of yourselves, staying out of trouble, helping out around the house, and being kind, of course, to everyone. We'll see you again real soon.